Hello everybody, welcome back to Yenes Cake Tips. Today's video is another three-dimensional cake. Every time there is a need for 3D cake, there is also few questions to be answered. Always first one is, do we have enough time to do that? If there is, second matter is, is there enough budget to cover the cost of the cake? If the answer is no, in that case, I like to have always a plan B to offer a cheaper and easier version. Instead of making the cake upright with all those time-consuming constructions and so on, making the same subject in a lying position will make the both parties uh, happy enough and will have the similar impact. These possibilities goes for almost every single three-dimensional cake request. So today we are going to make a lying down champagne bottle. And let me start from the board. This is 30 by 50 centimeters, nine millimeters uh, MDF wood covered with the black velvet to get the just nice contrast. And also with the help of a little bit of uh, double-sided tape, I coat second time with the cellophane sheet just to protect the board from chocolate, ganache, etc. So planning wise, I have a couple of reference pictures over here. I will come in, in the next minute to that. So I will have uh, here to use so oil spray and then confectionery glaze spray. And I have the second choice over here, also confectionery glaze. I will explain you if you don't have that, how you use this one. And I have airbrush with some green color, exactly the same tone, I already mix it. And I have a special ribbon, which is a kind of organze, means like, like see-through a little bit. And I will use also a special dimensional fabric paint to write inscription on the ribbon, so people can keep it for a long time. Hot glue gun, I will use just a dot on the board, not on the cake, to stabilize the uh, ribbon in the right position. So we have a kind of like ribbon work, like a, is a kind of uh, composition. All right, and rolling tools that you know, that PVC pipe, starch, and then plastic knife. A knife, uh, pallet knife, so like a spatula to make the cake masking correctly. A scissor, and I will use uh, plastic gloves while I'm dealing with the ganache and cake and everything. So, uh, and also over here I have a special foil, which is the very thin uh, gold color foil that I'm gonna use it at the tip of the bottle. It matches very nicely. If you don't have that, uh, you can also use, of course, gold spray with the alcohol and gold dust together. I'll explain you how to do that when the time comes. So, a cake here, 1.7 kilo. Each level is 700 gram mud cake. And then there's two layers here. In between, there is about three to 350 gram of uh, uh, ganache just to make the naked cake and then wrap with the clean wrap. So that is nothing done yet, but this is already enough to make this bottle in the right shape. An extra half a kilo ganache to make the masking and then finishing correctly. What else we have over here? I have a towel always on the table to get this uh, table clean and then also like uh, maybe some tools has to be cleaned at the same time. So that is it. That's all what we need as a tools, material, recipes and ingredients. So next I will explain you how do I start uh, planning the cake and then how do I get my templates done. So this cake will be 20 portion. What I print over here is just more than enough. It's just a matter of like a trial and error. Just bring your computer printer into the like different percentages till you get the desired size. So this will be end up around sort of 40 centimeter, it is more than enough. So I cut this part to join this, collage that pictures together. Always referring to the realistical picture will be a very good idea, so instead of just looking and drawing. All right, this is goes here, and then just stick it here nicely. Turn around, stick also here. And I have also, uh, file separators. They are transparent, so when I put over here, I can see the underneath very easily. That will help me to make a template. At the same time, I can keep it for the next uh, time if I have to take the same cake again on the same size. So I always do that. Plastic uh, file separator is very useful. So this is the size I'm looking for, something like that. Here's one. And always do the sticky tape also on the other side, so it's nice, nice and stiff. All right, then I'm gonna put put over here, and using my marker pen, just go around of it like this. So 
just finishing like this. And this part is actually on the picture a bit curved, but I make it straight, of course, realistically. So this is, will be then the, our template. Right, just put this over here. Now, if I make the cake exactly this size, and after that start all the ganaging everything, so I will end up with the fondant, will be around this way here. So do you realize that how ugly will this, will be this uh, bottle if I have it something about this size? It will be completely out of proportion. That's why I like to cut this template about uh, four or five millimeters smaller. So I'm just following my drawing here, but I'm cutting about three, four, five millimeters smaller. All right, I'm just going inside the line, as you see. Then we'll end up exactly the same size what we see on the picture. You see, it's a lot smaller than that. I'll continue the cutting off. Okay, see, it's a simple bottle shape, champagne bottle shape, but there is quite important that we do the right thing when we're preparing our template. As you see that, a lot more smaller than this bottle. See that it goes inside. See that this part is for the uh, distances for our masking and uh, coating with fondant. Let's start now getting the sponge from the fridge and start carving the cake. Okay, I have a little bit of hot water here just to help my knife uh, become sort of like a, a nice and warm so I can cut clean here. Okay. I like to keep my knife wet so it cuts nicer. And if it's too much, you can always tap it on the, on the towel. All right, that's done. Let's get something here. About this is. Mud cake is wonderful cake to just patch together. Just put a little bit more here and just touch one more piece here for that. We will carve this more anyway. Right. Okay, now let's go back to this. This is too high. I'm going to cut this one down a little bit. So just like this. Right. And then I like to get this one more upper, of course. So what I like to do, I'm going to cut this slightly like that. And also like that. Okay. And also a little bit like that. Okay, now my aim is to create that bottle in that kind of shape from the side. So I'm going to cut this one one more time just to make sure that I'm doing right, sort of this much. And after that, I can join this together again. So this is my, this is my side view, like this, all right? Let's see what we have here. So the front of the bottle, is it okay? I have to cut this one like that. And also carve 
with round shape, of course. Okay. Like that. Carving a bottle is a very, very simple thing. You just make sure that it's nice and round. Also, when it comes to the, the lower part, you can also carve inwards. Like that. All right, now I need the pot to get all those off cuts into it. Just a little bit more carving needed. So we're just going to cut this part slightly roundish. Okay. And this part also slightly roundish. Okay. And also we do underneath also round. So don't forget the, the neck here is complete round, but this is almost like a two thirds of a round. This is done, and every champagne bottle at the bottom is just like a, there is a gap in there to sort of like a holding a finger to when you serve, right? So I just also create that a little bit more realistic, put a piece of uh, sponge out from there. All right, so clean this a little bit and start masking. If you don't carve enough, you can always push it in. But if you carve too much, you have to uh, bring back with the with the what do you call with the ganache or some more sort of sponge. Push it in like this is already good enough to to make it right. All right. So I'm going to put this cake now for just a few minutes in the fridge to make it a bit more firmer, and I will use. Firm cake, cold cake, and a soft ganache. I put, I put already this one a couple of uh, seconds in the microwave to make it a lot more softer. It's easier to work with over a cold cake. It will firm it up on a cold surface anyway. First, I give a crumb coat. So the very thin, but enough to cover all those gaps and pores and everything. See, because the cake is nice and cold, it's the ganache is soft, it applies very easily, but getting very quickly firming up on the surface, all right? I'm not really trying to do perfect, just as quick as possible. Stick all the crumbs on the surface, and I'm gonna do this one more time later on. Okay, now I'm not going to use any scraper. What I like to do is going to get some cling wrap and put it on and push. So that actually makes it things a little bit more easier on the next stage because I'm also filling it like nice and symmetrical, nice and firm, and then there's no bumps, there's no nothing here. Everything is will be okay for the next step. All right, push this in nicely. I can also take the fondant leveler, give a bit of pushes here, make sure everything nice and straight. Good. Don't have to worry about to take it out. Just keep it like this. Go back in the fridge. 
We are ready for final masking. I just took it out from the fridge. It wasn't too long, just about maybe five minutes. That's good. Now all that I need a soft scraper. I didn't show you at the beginning, so please take a note. Uh, just a piece of plastic that's uh, flexible enough to bend. So I'm just going to go one more time with a soft ganache. And this time I'll be a little bit more careful. Not so rough. And of course, it's a very good idea to put the cake on a turntable. I'm not going to wait too long to use my scraper on the cake. Because if I carry on here, it may get too cold and I cannot just do my good job here. Let's just go like this. Scrape. Scrape. as nice as possible. That's good. So now I'm going to go over here. Nice and thin, not to make the cake thicker than necessary. As you see that I'm especially creating this part a little bit more bigger, just represent the cork. Useful, isn't it? This is just a piece of plastic. It's just a you can cut from anything. It can be like a, a little lid from supermarket packaging or something. Even that the file separator I use for my template, uh, there is sometimes there's thicker ones. You can also use those. Right? So I'm pretty much ready now. I'm just gonna give a bit of cleaning around, put back in the fridge for a few minutes and after start uh, the coating the cake with fondant. Okay, I have here one kilo Vision white fondant. It is my Really favorite fondant because it's really uh, nice to work on three-dimensional cakes. It doesn't dry so easily, so quickly. I can work further quite a long time with that. And also has a very good stretch. So, start with a bit of extra starch. And I'm going to roll this one quite long. That's why I start a sort of like sausage shape. All right. All right, let's go. I'm gonna get around three millimeters, I would say. This kind of bits and pieces always sticks to the fondant. Now we are constantly under bombardment of dust and kind of like powder things around. So it has to be your table tools have to be always clean before you start anything. Push a little bit around. Okay. Air bubbles has to be removed. All right, let's go. See, I'm just dragging my PVC pipe now over the fondant. It's already long enough. That's nice and smooth. All right, let's go and put it on. It's 
starting from here. That's it. That's easiest coating because everything's sort of roundish. No problem at all. Don't even need this. Push this in. Okay. Plastic knife. Don't cut, just drag on the edge. Make sure that you're putting the fondant as deep as possible without cutting. Just like that. All right, one more time. All right, now I can turn the other side, sharper side. Go now two or three times over the same spot. Make sure that when you hit the base, you have absolute cut, not overlapping cutting. That's so, two, three times cutting in the same spot. That's done. This one, a very straight cut like this. And the other side. Just to create that that look here. Sort of like irregular lines here. A little bit here, something like that. Okay, this is not right. Just go in the right direction. Okay, that's already good enough. This will not go back to fridge. It will stay in room temperature. It will nice and dry like this. So we are ready for the next step. Next step is uh, starting with the airbrush. But before we do that, uh, I like to take opportunity of that white background to create that line. So that line is the most important part over here to give the visually uh, shine. Uh, even that we don't use that uh, confectionery glaze, you will still have the look of shine if you don't use it. So that's why I want to make a double uh, step that I'm going to create that line at the same time. Later on, I will use the confectionery glaze, even will be better than that. So uh, how I do that? I just take a, a piece of cellophane sheet, just a very thin uh, sort of like a cellophane sheet that which is uh, camouflaged that white underneath the airbrush. I just make a a straight cut like this. Quite nice and straight. It can be a little bit more thinner in the front because of this area here, thinner. Right? So that is already okay. As you see that I'm going to cover this one with the gold and cover with the label. So if I have from here to here, which is this is long enough, to put over here, I will have my camouflage ready. So how I glue that, if I if I spray water here on this area, I will have a different surface that with the airbrush will be make a sort of different kind of look. So I don't I don't want to have a differentiation on the surface. I want to keep it nice and clear. I will just like to keep it like this and then just make a mist of water, just mist, very, 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 very little. All right, and then holding this carefully and stick it over here 
just like this. All right. So that is already holding enough. Should I check that it's holding enough or not? Uh, yes and no. No, not was not enough water. Just going sort to of put a little bit more. Like that. Also, it's important when I remove it from here, I don't want to have like a uh, too sticky. And that's it. I think I'm happy with this one. Now like this. Now I can start my airbrushing. So, green. Let's check. If I put straight away green, I will not have this color. I just have a green and yellow. This is what I have at the end. So this is nice green, exactly the same. It's a bit yellowish. And I will have also some little bit of black now later on. I'm going to maybe put it just behind here, a little bit more create that depth. All right. So airbrush. There's enough air here. That's it. I have this air inside a brush. Now you have to be careful. You have to always try a little bit of on the paper first. That's good. So clear up around. And I also put my green uh, plastic sheet behind. Doesn't have to be green, any color. So that protect my table. So I just go for a lower part first. Not worry about too much on this side, but in this, this part is important. As you see over here also, there's some uh, white still, but sort of like not so sharp like that. I'm gonna try to create that one too. I love the color, really, really nice. Same as the bottle. Nice and deep here. Okay, now, again here. You can see different shades over here. I'm just gonna make it like lines that which is not really 100% clear. And then this part, I'm not gonna try this because I feel that it's not really glowing. I'm gonna use a little bit more water here. All right, let's do it here. Okay, let's go. All right. Take it and place it. All right, so I'm going to go from top down. Okay, and then again, I'd like to create that, that whiteness here, whiteness here. Get out of here. A little bit more. That's black, that's green. I did not need any black because it's already dark enough here. I think I'm happy with this one now already without, without too much, otherwise we will make it too dark. So I'm just going to let it be here and remove that part right away. That's it. So when we cover this and cover that, you will see that one is nice and shine. All right. So next things I like to do uh, the glazing, the uh, confectionery glaze. But as I touch over here, 
little bit sticky. I will wait a few more minutes to get touch dry. Then I will apply my confectioner glaze. So, uh, confectioner glaze, it comes in a bottle in yellowish color. So if you want to spray that, you can do that. Uh, the only thing is that do not put your atomizer inside and keep it inside. So you use it, take it out and wash it with the alcohol. With the alcohol, just could be like a gin, vodka, or whatever, and then uh, make sure that this uh, uh, the nozzle is the nozzle is open. It can always work. So after using, take it out, wash it, and keep the bottle like that, and this one separate. So that will always work. But uh, if you have this one, which is uh, Dinky Doodles uh, Shell and Shine, this is the one that I can uh, get uh, around here. Uh, best I can I can get. Maybe there's other ones, I'm not so sure, but uh, I'm quite happy with this one. So, uh, this one doesn't give any tint, so it's not yellow, it's just like nice and clear, but it is quite liquid, so when you're spraying on vertical areas, it may just run down, so you have to be very careful. So, you have to go around about 30 centimeters, and then just sort of like a nice and easy, uh, not so too much in the one spot, all in once, okay? So... Especially when you're spraying on a kind of area that which is uh, freshly uh, painted, it may just run down, it will be quite ugly at the end. So, I'm already quite happy with this much of shine. I might just go one more time later on, but uh, you have to be careful. If you if you spray too much, it will run down. It pick up the uh, paint from the side. It will look quite ugly. So you have to be careful with this. Now, a few more steps left. Uh, since that we don't dealing any more chocolate ganache and everything, I like to remove that protection uh, line here. So then we can just receive that clean black velvet. First, remove the side. Okay. After that, you just start cutting with the scissor and after that continue with tearing. Just tearing. I showed this one before. You don't you don't tear straight, you just tear a bit more frontal, then you will have, uh, you realize that the cellophane, it just, it just uh, cut exactly from the edge of the cake. Time to time you need a, just a little bit of scissor cut for a clean start, then continue. Look at that. You don't see any more cellophane, but there's a cellophane underneath where the cake is touching to the, to the board. All right. Now, next thing is, I like to put my gold. All right. So gold comes exactly here, about this much. How much? This much. Okay. Somewhere around there. Right. I don't want to waste this one too much, so I'm just going to make a little cut like that. I may use for something else. This one you can get it from the internet. It's called um, gold wrapping foil, uh, sort of aluminium foil, I would say. And you can find if you don't find it. So what you do is actually you just put a, a mask over here, just a bit of a piece of uh, sticky tape or something, and then spray this part with a gold luster and alcohol mixture. It will have this very similar effect, but this is really look real. And this is not really uh, sort of like unethical to use that on the cake because we wrap chocolates and everything with this foil, you know? So it's not a problem. So that will be then uh, look like this and have a bit of like turn like that. I'm gonna cut this like that a little bit. All right, at this stage, what I like to do, I'm gonna spray some water. So this water is already wet enough to hold the cake and actually sticks to the sort of sugar, all right? Where was it? Here, there, just make sure that measurement's correct. It's somewhere around this area. 
Look at that. If you cut this in the, from the right spot, you will not see the, any join. Right? Just like that, like that, like that. Nice and deep with the plastic knife. After that, you use this. That will cut this very easily. See, look like this. And then turn around. Like that. And also remove that. This is something that very easy to cut with the blade. Right? Make sure you're not cutting the foil, uh, velvet. Sorry. Okay, that's sort of, sort of like a, if you push it a bit more, it will stabilize. Right? So that stays there. Okay, just push this one a little bit, a little bit like this also. Gives a kind of. Same kind of feeling like the other one. Like that. So, you can also like polish a little bit like this to make it a bit more straight. Okay, all those foldings are disappeared. All right, next, we're going to cut this one. What is this? This is a sugar print. So uh, there is, a, I mean, tons of uh, information in the internet. You can just uh, go and find the right one and then just play with it in the computer a little bit in the size that you, you, you maybe just cut out of paper first one, know the size exactly. Of course, this is not the right size because it's going to be fold. So this is, has to be print much longer than that, as you see over here. So then I'm going to put it on now as an edible uh, print image. Technology is there. We have to use it. If you want, <laughs> be my guest. You can also uh, paint this with the uh, gel colors. I'm using a wood underneath. Doesn't damage my tabletop. You can also cut with scissor. The edible print, there's companies doing it for you. Uh, I think you have to prepare your uh, artwork first and pass it to them. They will print for you. All right. Now, uh, as you see that it's a nice sort of thick, it's not so flimsy, which is good. All right. Now I'm going to uh, do something. I'm going to I'm going to put a bit of water here because it is thick enough so I, I allow myself to use water but if it's too thin in your choice like if you have don't have that this thicker one you can also use oil because oil has got enough moisture inside to glue it and at the same time I have that glaze over here it's actually completely sealed the paint the, the, the color on the cake so the color is not going to bleed to that that's why I can allow myself use a little bit of water all right otherwise you can always use oil so make it a bit moisture here, all right, turn around and put it on without any hesitation. Just put it on in one shot, okay, like that, and let go. All right, same thing over here. I don't like this part. Uh, I can still see white part, so I'm just going to cut a little bit more thinner. All right, that's good. So, again. Of water here, turn around and put it on. So this is more than what we need at the bottom part. I'm going to just cut it off. Just 
one goes there. And this one actually no need to cut. Just right. A little bit of push. There we go. Our champagne bottle is ready. So next thing I'm gonna do some uh, ribbon work. That will be interesting for you to see. Now my aim is to create a ribbon work right here about this area and going like that and actually it stays in the air. All right and after that so I like to make it this one turn like this and then turn like that another extension comes over here etc. So in one area about this much I like to write uh, happy 50th birthday but I don't want to worry about at this stage how long I have to cut the ribbon. As long as I can just get the happy 50th birthday around here, I'm happy with that because the rest of it, it's enough to do deal with that, all the cuttings and everything. So if I use this, uh, which is dimensional fabric paint, if I try to write like, because I'm gonna touch down on writing, it will be all over the place. So I have to fix that ribbon on the table first. That is very, very important. So I stick here. I also stick here. I will remove that one later on, all right? Stick here and stick here. I will also stabilize on this side. Doesn't really matter because I can always remove that one uh, anytime I like. All right. So that is the area that I like to write that writing happy 50th birthday. So this one settles down. I have to push it down really and, and take all the bubbles off because if I don't do that, at one stage, I will have one bubble, just puff, and then just the all writing will be, will be sort of like damage, all right? I make sure that all the things just flow down and fill up the nozzle. Then I open up, and then clean the nozzle a little bit, and, and then writing. Happy. 50 it. Birthday. All right. Now, it is soft. If I touch it, I will destroy it. I will wait about 10 minutes to become touch dry because that will uh, stay flexible. If I use chocolate uh, and I wait for a while, it will crack when I bend it. So it was a really, really good thing to use this one. It is called dimensional fabric paint. You can find it in the craft shops or like, a, uh, like textile shops or somewhere, fabric shops, you can find it. It, it, it will go for on a cloth or it will even go, I think, on, on sort of like a uh, kitchenware, like a little, little glasses or something like, you can also write this one there, all right? So I will wait and come back to you. Okay, my writing is already almost dry. Uh, it's not 100% for thick areas, but I make some trial over here. It's already touchable. So I'm just gonna remove that, the, all those sticky tapes. All right, this is gone. And this one, also gone. It may go through the other side, but it's easy to clean with a scraper, no problem at all especially do it freshly. All right. So you see that there's a little bit of here. You can just clean with a the, with the wet cloth or something. No problem. So I like to put this one in this area uh, like this. So I like to have this ribbon goes underneath this way. So I have to cut this around that direction. Nice and clean. All right, now watch this one. I'm gonna use hot glue gun to stabilize that ribbon here, All right? Where do I go? I'm gonna go here, somewhere around here, and I like to put just a bit of dot of, what we call this hot glue gun, here in this area, just a little bit. I'm not touching to the kick, just have a drop of that here, All right? and touching there, and then stabilize it. So it's already holding, and then that's already good enough. So I like to make it 
this way. I don't want to cover too much of the writing, but I like to have it still somewhere around here. And I want to go also this one like that, like that. So I'm just going to cut this one first, about this much, all right? Let it be first, so I'm going to cut later on again. So this is already, I'm happy with this one, so I can see the writing from here. I can still see the, the, uh, the label of the, of the thing, of the Y, of the champagne. Just want to touch it off here, drop, little drop here, and also touch here, just a little bit. So it's already stabilized. See, the, the ribbon doesn't go anywhere. So uh, what about this one, like that? Okay, so I'm going to connect this like this. Nice and clean cut. This is the final cut. You have to be really careful. Right. All right. All right. Look at this. This is already nice finishing in here. And I'd like to go one more here and turn this way. So if I come from there, I will continue coming from this direction like this. I think this, is, this cut is perfect. Right. Otherwise, I'll cut a little bit more, and this time, I want to place this one like this here. It looks like it's passing through underneath, just a little bit hot glue gun. Don't go too much with that. I don't want that hot glue gun to go over the ribbon on top of it. That's already good. So this one, I want to have it like this. All right, and again, one cut here. And after that, one cut there. Isn't it lovely? So with a simple ribbon, you add a kind of like another dimension to the cake. It will even become more special. So that's the writing. That's the ribbon going underneath. So we are done with this. So it is finished. Let me just turn 360 again for you. So you can see every direction. And um, that was my this week video uh, how to make a champagne bottle in an easy way or you can call the NS way if you like and obviously the same method goes to every single type of beverages even the canned beverages you can do the exactly same way so it was a three-dimensional cake but I hope that you pick up individual tips and tricks from that like for example how to make this shine how to bend the ribbon how to do this part and everything so this was I think uh, it's quite useful for you to pick up as a tips and tricks so thank you so much again for watching Yenna's Cake Tips. Don't forget, there is a lot more to learn at yenasway.com. God bless you all. Till to the next one. Bye for now.